Welcome, welcome everyone to Chi's webinar for the end of 2023. It's quite amazing. I believe that we have the chat enabled for all of you who are joining us right now on Zoom, or if you're joining us on social media, please feel free to give a shout out. Let us know where you're coming from. Um, it's always so heartening for me to see all of the different places that you guys are coming from. So we've got Prescott Valley, Arizona here from John. Thank you, John. And um, Jason, can you make sure that the chat is set up so that it's to everyone? Because John's, John's message is coming just to us. Um, so great. All right. Pennsylvania, Rochester, Romania, Tucson, Hawaii. Amazing. Wow. Kansas City. Yes, you'll be seeing some of you guys in here. Um, ten Tennessee. Oh, wow. It's coming fast now, y'all. I can't even catch up. Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. From Southerners, as well as Belgians. Belgium. Canada, my goodness, England, Scotland. How wonderful that all of you are joining us live right now. It's just so, so, so amazing that we can use platforms like these to connect across the world. It's, it's just beautiful. I wanna thank, by the way, all of you who have already joined as Chi contributors. And I know many of you that are on this call right now or on this gathering have already joined us as Chi contributors. Um, you know, thank you for your donations of $108 a year because with those we're able to sustain these webinars and I, you know, I just did the budget review and I have to just tell you, we are just starting to be able to once again offer these webinars um, without too much stress because your donations are what support our back end staff that you never see like Jason and Carrie and Chloe and everybody else to make these live gatherings possible. So I wanna thank each of you who have already taken the time, energy and heart to support these webinars as Chi contributors. And if you're interested in doing that and you haven't yet, we'll have more information on that later. Um, for those of you who may have never come before, uh, welcome uh, to the Consciousness and Healing Initiative free Friday webinar of the month. My name is Dr. Shamini Jan. I have the privilege of being the founder and steward CEO of the Consciousness and Healing Initiative. And we have been engaged in an absolutely, well, several beautiful projects this year, but this particular one, um, we are so excited to introduce to you formally, finally, as we've begun our production for the Energy That Heals documentary. And we have lots of stories to tell and lots of footage to share with you. I wanna welcome our esteemed guests for this webinar today. We have with us Christina Brasson, from 3-1 Creative Productions, who is partnering with the Consciousness and Healing Initiative to do this documentary. We also have with us Dr. Daniel Vicario, who hopefully is not a stranger to many of you, a founding board member and continues to serve on the board of directors at Chi, who is also playing a role in this film along with many, direct, many uh, board of directors, many council members, many people in the community, as you will see. I should also remark that Christina also serves on the Board of Advisors for the Consciousness and Healing Initiative, and I'll let her tell you a little bit more about herself and her story. We'll start with you, Christina. Welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to join with our community today. Oh, well, it's so nice to be here and to be speaking with you about this exciting film project that we're embarking on, and thanks for creating the space and 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 holding it so that we can, we can discuss more. Um, I have been in media production for my entire career, a uh, storyteller, content creator for 30 plus years. And, but how I got specifically into this topic um, was just because I had a passion for it, a real curious passion. And I really wanted to understand the nature of reality and certainly consciousness. And I, I had the pleasure of reading uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra's book, Quantum Healing, in the 90s. And it was a book that I'd just been um, waiting to read. It felt like it just was describing creation itself to me. And it was like reading magic for me and really changed the trajectory of, of um, my of some of the work that I was doing, really. Um, Flash forward 10 years later, I mean, I can tell you how I got into this holistic healing space. Uh, 10 years later, I had my son, and that's when I really first hit up against um, the medical system where I experienced some limitations. And um, 
I can tell you that my son had some, it was born with some skin sensitivities like asthma, I mean, sorry, like eczema, and it cascaded into uh, seasonal allergies and then, and then asthma. And um, I remember when I left the doctor's office when he was five and I had left with seven medications. And that's when it was clear to me that we were uh, chasing um, symptoms and that we really didn't understand what was going on that these things were connected uh, because the gut microbiome wasn't a thing yet. Um, it was 16 years ago. So I started doing my own research and learned about the uh, interconnections with the gut and diet. And I introduced probiotics and got them off dairy and gluten and such. And it was a process, um, but his primary doctor thought I was nuts. And I think the allergist thought I was nuts and my family did. And I can tell you that being an early adopter in this space can be a lonely place to be. So I'm, I'm glad that a lot has changed. Science has changed as it does. And we have, um, we have different things going. We have functional medicine now, um, integrative approaches, and we understand the connection of organ systems and, and root causes now as Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic had always known, but this was, um, this was my first taste into um, the limitations of the Western medical model. And, and so this is, this kind of became a, a thing where I wanted to uh, delve into this space to, to help bring about a, a new, a new story and, and a new paradigm, which is one of um, the energetic perspective and one of interconnection. And I know we're going to go into a lot of this today, but this is kind of how I started in this space and, and creating content in this space. Thank you so much for all of that, Christina. It's really awesome to hear your story and your challenges with navigating um, the current healthcare system when you're looking for solutions for your son and how you had to do sort of a little bit of your own digging. And, uh, you know, I'm still very grateful to Deepak Chopra for introducing us. I remember when you reached out to me with your first film, The Way of Miracles documentary. If you guys have not seen that, it's out on Amazon Prime, highly recommended, a beautiful film, mostly centering around an integrative healing practitioner who is wonderful, whose name is Mark Mancola. And mm -hmm. Christina, as you know, when Christina and I met you all, um, you know, a couple of years ago when she was filming for this documentary, she wanted someone to speak about energy healing and she wanted a scientific perspective also. So I just get this email from Deepak Chopra saying, please meet. And he connects us in this way. And we became really good friends and began dreaming up this possibility of how can we take this dimension of healing, the spiritual and the energetic, and help people understand not only the validity of it, but the power of it. How can we inspire people to recognize their own healing power and what the biofield is sharing about our ability to heal through interconnection? And so we both got really excited about this. Christina joined the board and we began to just socialize this idea with the board and with our councils. We have a scientific advisory council. We have a healing practitioner council and everyone got really excited. She is known for doing research. We're known for developing community. We're known for trying to provide education on science and practice. But everybody said, we need to go big. We need to kind of get this out there more in the public. It's still kind of the best kept secret. And we need someone really good to put this together. So we really began. And I share all of this journey, too, personally, as I know that many of you that are watching this, you're very creative. And sometimes you get a creative spark or you get a creative urge or you get an idea and maybe you socialize it. Other people think it's a great idea, whatever. How do you move forward when you don't have anything? We didn't have any budget for this, right? We just, it was an idea, one that we were all kind of behind and we had to kind of start from scratch. It's, and thank you everyone for your patience. There is a little bit of a lag um, time and Christina, you do look a little blurry. I sent you a note. so. Maybe you could just check your bandwidth settings and everything. We've got, we're getting some love already in the chat. Thank you, everyone. You can see, and someone is already asking, are we gonna have links to this to share out? Yes, we are going to unveil the Energy That Heals documentary um, website with you all very soon so you can share. Now, currently, we do not have this particular trailer. Christina, everyone is just giving you major accolades in the chat right now. Um, because, you know, and, and let's have a discussion about this. We really want to hear your thoughts and your suggestions and your takeaways as you watch some of this with us, because we are, we are in production for this all. But we wanted to show you what we started with. And I think you can get a sense of Christina's mastery 
and of the subject matter and the material, the, the interest in making sure that we share science. One thing that was not in this trailer that we didn't get to do because we pulled from existing content was share patient stories and also deeper perspectives from the healthcare community. So there's a lot to discuss on that. And thank you, all of, this, all of the, what you're putting in the chat is very meaningful and we're looking at it. I do wanna remind everyone that if you're joining us here on Zoom and you have a question for Christina or Dan or myself or all of us, please put it in Q&A. We will leave some time for, for answering any questions or specific things that you have. We'll make sure we try to get over, over that with you. But I wanted to share that journey because that's what we began with. And then luckily through some donations and I wanna share full disclosure, this is a three-year project. Um, we're about a third of the way through with our fundraising, but because we were able to raise some funds for this year, we began production on the film. We've gone to over five cities and we have filmed many people, including Dr. Dan Vicario, who I'd like to bring up on the virtual stage next. Dan, you have been such a champion of healing your whole life. And I know I did not give formal bio introduction. So for those of you who have not met Dan yet, I wanna tell you a little bit about Dan. Um, Dan is an integrative oncologist. He is a medical oncologist. I met him over a decade ago when I was seeking support to do my study, randomized controlled trial on healing with breast cancer survivors. And I, I joke about this, um, but it, Dan, that meeting with you, that initial meeting in your office left such a profound impression on me. Dan invited me to shadow him as he worked with his cancer patients. And it's a day I will never forget. The compassion, the love, the presence that you are able to share with your patients is an inspiration and a testament to the power of healing. And we're so grateful to have you as a board member of Chi and also play a strong role in this film. So I'm gonna hand it over to you. One last thing I do wanna tell you about Dan, cause he's so humble, he'll never tell you everything he's done. For many decades, Dan created um, through his nonprofit, San Diego Cancer Research Institute, which by the way, incubated Chi when we first began before we got our own 501c3 status. That nonprofit um, was able to provide free healing services of various types of holistic healing, including art therapy, Reiki, acupuncture, many different things, meditation to all cancer patients in San Diego at no charge. So Dan, you've been at this for a really long time and Really excited to give you the floor and have you share your perspective on this film. Yeah, thank you so, so much. Uh, it really is an honor and a privilege to be here with you, Shamani, Christina, and each one of you that are here watching. Uh, we're grateful that you took the time to be with us. I'm really excited about this documentary. Uh, it's a powerful name too, The Energy That Heals. Um, my interest in healing came at a very young age. One of the several things I remember, for example, when I was six years of age, I told my dad that when I grew up, I would help him heal his leg, which was paralyzed from polio. Then before going into medical school, I became very interested in all medical approaches and what helps people heal, including energy healing, energy medicine, what we now call biofield therapies. And the reason I went into medicine is because I wanted to support people in their healing. What I realized over the years is that we all heal in different ways. Our chances of a better outcome actually is through a truly integrative approach, combining the best that medicine and science have to offer with evidence-based integrative complementary healing traditions, disciplines, and modalities that will help people optimize their chances of healing. And this is what we call integrative medicine and whole person health. And, and my specialty is called integrative oncology. And actually that's the, uh, the critical aspect of this documentary. So since medical school, I really wanted to understand why some people with serious conditions, including advanced cancers, do better than expected. They beat all odds, live beyond statistics, thrive through what is considered medically impossible or unexplainable. When I heard from Shamani and Christina about this idea of creating this documentary, I became so, so excited. I mean, my passion really came out and 
I, what I want to share here briefly is some of the concepts and topics that we believe are critically important and will be covered in the documentary by several of the speakers. So what really helps people heal? Uh, what I observed over many years as a physician is the following. Actually, being aware or not, patients have this inner sense of empowerment, intention, understanding, and belief that they can reverse their illness into wellness. They follow their inner voice, their intuition on what's best for them. They find the best healing practitioners, those who will support them in their multidisciplinary and multidimensional healing, including the right doctors for them. They take the time to generate, here it is, to generate their own healing energy what is called chi in Eastern tradition, which uh, Christina showed clearly in, in the trailer. This includes healthy nutrition, good sleep, some form of exercise or movement, focus on their breath, do some form of meditation, visualization, and or prayer. They do stress reduction, they out in nature, find inner peace in the midst of the storm. They integrate biofield therapies, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. They also see medical treatments, procedures, surgery, medicines as healing tools. And in the case of cancer patients, they see chemotherapy and radiation as healing treatments, tools to support them in their healing journey. They really connect with the infinite power that we all have to heal from any condition. So we as doctors and practitioners, need to empower patients to trust in their intuition, their infinite ability to heal and support their beliefs. We should encourage them to take the time they need to care for themselves and focus on their healing, to explore in a truly integrative way, different comprehensive healing modalities that have been proven to be effective. It is very important for doctors and healthcare practitioners to remember this. When we believe that someone has a greater probability to heal, their chances, their, their chances really increase. Even if the statistics don't look good, we can help patients have a better quality of life and even live longer. Just as an example that we were talking about the other day, Shamani, we know that hospice patients who are cared for by compassionate hospice team live with an improved quality of life. We know that. But even we have seen that some live longer than expected. And this is something that really need, needs to be looked at. So I would like to briefly talk about true integration. This is what everyone involved in the documentary believe is so important. For doctors and practitioners from all disciplines to work together, traditional medicine, osteopathic medicine, integrative medicine, functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, indigenous medicine, and practitioners of all the healing arts collaborating together. The power of all these healers working together in supporting patients is immense. And this is another thing we keep talking about and looking at continuing to measure. It becomes synergistic. It creates an infinite power that is hard to measure. So what I also observed over the decades, and we were talking about this with Shamini and Christina, um, over the decades of being a doctor, is that practitioners' presence, compassion, empathy, consciousness, intention, and specifically the practitioner's energy will significantly help the patient or the client in their healing process. This goes for all practitioners, including nurses and doctors. It's their presence and energy that heals. And that's why the title of the documentary, right? The energy that heals. So true healing is multidisciplinary and multidimensional. So why the title, the energy that heals? I see it from as a doctor's perspective, as a scientist, as an oncologist. Everything is energy. The smallest particle that exists, the quarks, the protons, neutrons that make the atom, and the small, smallest building blocks of our body, from the intracellular particles, the nucleus, the cells, 
to the tissues, organs. It's all energy. I mean, we're uh, another thing that we keep saying and quoting, Einstein said, what we call matter is energy. There is no matter. And his equation of E equals MC squared says it all, really. Our thoughts, our beliefs, our memories, emotions, fears, intention, hope, our consciousness, it's all energy. Human interactions, especially in our conversation here, patients with their practitioners, that's energy. I mean, all healing traditions know the importance of energy. Even the science of epigenetics understands energy, another thing we keep talking about. And there are speakers in this documentary that are going to really dive into the, the importance of understanding epigenetics. So the list goes on and on. I'm going to briefly move into the topic of the medical system, and then that will be it, which will be covered in detail in the documentary. Medicine and science have evolved and continued to do so. Significant advances have occurred. For example, some cancers that were considered terminal and incurable in the recent past are now curable with newer medicines. Medicine is great. It's fantastic in many situations, especially, really, um, especially in, in emergencies, in acute events like accidents, heart attacks, strokes, aggressive infections, respiratory failure, certain advanced cancers, yet it is far from adequate. Medicine has limitations, especially in chronic conditions. So, you know, we, we were talking about the other day, for centuries, medicine has been a very healing profession. Following Hippocrates' teaching and the wisdom going back to 400 BC, but over the last many decades, with all the new medicines and technology, the medical system and some within it, unfortunately, have forgotten the true concept of healing, connection, intention, touch, and energy. I mean, Hippocrates said 2,400 years ago, it is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. So unfortunately, the current medical system is unable to completely help with many chronic diseases, the mental health epidemic, disabilities, emotional traumas. In addition, it's not nurturing for everyone inv involved, especially for the patients and their caregivers, and also for the nurses, the doctors, and all the medical staff. I know a large number of physician colleagues are so unhappy with the system. They're not able to care for their patients in the way that they envisioned and intended. They're frustrated, they're upset, and many are burnt out. Nurses who are the healing angels in the medical system, they're burnt out. They are not given the time, resources, and support they need to be the healers they want to be. So those who work in the medical system have good intentions, big hearts, hopes, compassion, empathy. It really is the system itself that is unconscious with no heart or compassion. So there's, fortunately, there's hunger, hunger for change for helping the medical system evolve to an optimal healing environment. It's actually becoming a mandate from patients, caregivers, those who are working in the medical field and society at large. So the other thing we keep saying is integrative medicine and whole person care is not optional. It really is essential. It is essential. So the good news is that medicine is al as always evolving from new medicines, techniques, to better procedures, surgeries, to understanding the importance of natural therapies and integrative medicine, it is evolving. Yet not as fast as we want and we desperately need. Mm -hmm. So the future of medicine is completely integrative. Several reputable large institutions already have integrative medicine and integrative specialty programs, again, this is essential, not optional. And, and Shamini and, and many of us have been working with centers who are applying integrated modalities. I know we would all love to talk about other topics such as advances in medicine and science, list of integrated uh, modalities. Yes, and it would be amazing work. to have you focus like specifically on that. <laughs> Give a oh. shout out in the chat if you want Dan to give a webinar on integrative approaches to cancer care next year, y'all. Because... And the last thing I want to say about the power of prayer, the miracles, distal he distant healing, all those things. My last thought, when I think of the large number of patients that I had the privilege to work with over the decades, 
their courage, their nobility, their strength, faith, and hope has been overwhelming and truly inspiring to me. I've learned so much for them and I feel so grateful. Their presence actually helped me heal in so many levels. So thank you. Thank you, Shamini, Christina, and everyone of Chi and all those who are present in this Zoom. Now I become emotional, so I'll stop. Oh, so beautiful, Dan. I can feel your heart and your love, and you're getting so much love from everybody right now in the chat. First of all, everybody wants you to come back and and share more. I think there's so much wisdom that you know, this is the this is the the trouble with documentaries, even in an hour, hour and a half, as you can imagine, just from meeting Dan. And he is going to be featured pretty strongly in the film. So just know that we will be capturing all of this beautifully for more people to witness. Um, there's so much richness in this community. And it's really been an honor as we've been going through the production process to listen to the stories. Of course, as you all know, we have famous friends who are amazing speakers and give the sound bites. And I want to honor the questions and answers and just name one that came up and said, will the film show more detail on studies and patient stories that support the statements the speakers make in the trailer? Yes, <laughs> we are not going to make a film that's only sound bites. As you all know, sound bites from leaders in the field can help people in the general public who don't know anything about this to be interested, to get interested. And we have that embarrassment of riches here with our community that we have so many wonderful leading lights like Dan and Deepak and Bruce and Greg and so many, right? And yes, we will be interviewing them. And speaking for myself, and Christina, I'm sure that you echo this. The most profound things that have happened for me as we've begun this filming have been to hear from the heartfelt experiences of the patients that we have been filming. And we actually do have a little bit more sneak peek that we wanna show you. So what we showed you before, just to remind you, was a trailer with existing content to start telling the story of what we're gonna do. By the way, I just wanna honor, I see several donors that are here, um, thank you for the, your initial early investment and in believing in in what we were doing through a trailer when you had not even seen, you know, the footage yet. Um, we're so deeply grateful. I see Kim, I see Susanna, I see several people that have supported this film already um, on the chat. I just want to give a shout out to each of you that have already supported this film. We are so, so grateful. It is because of donations from people like you that the footage that we're about to show has become a reality from the etheric into the physical. So with that, Christina, I would like to hand it off to you so that you can share with folks some of the progress that we've made with the budget that we've raised so far. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, we, we we started filming just the end of um the end of the summer. And we as you mentioned, we've been to five different locations and we've been able to capture some amazing people so far. So we've put together a little a little teaser hot off the presses, um, because it's been a lot of content to get through. Not everyone is featured in this yet, but it's just a little teaser. Uh and I am going to set that up now and I hope that it's not laggy. I'm just turning off my camera to save bandwidth. Somebody um, su suggested that's a good idea, so. We spend more money in the United States, for example, on healthcare than any other developed country, and our health outcomes are less. We need to, as doctors, embrace the concept that as wonderful as medicine is, there are limitations. We know that cancer patients are looking for other approaches. Usually the lungs are, are really heavy and it's hard to breathe. It's like having 50 pounds of weight on you. And in that session, I felt it being lifted and I could breathe freely again. That was instantaneous. Many times when a patient gets off of a healing table, they'll say things like, I feel lighter, I feel more at ease. But how is it happening? How are those fields of energy and information shifting in a way that a person feels lighter? And when you're done, just gently touch the shoulders, take a nice breath, 
the body knows exactly what to do to heal itself. And so we find that when the energy is flowing smoother, then the body can heal itself. It can get rid of some of the trauma, some of the pain, and just um, it knows what to do. And so we're facilitators in that aspect of just helping them to clear their field. The medications, in some way they kept me alive, but they never allowed me to live. This energy healing, in some ways, I feel like it opened a door that I didn't know was closed. You can go to ask for help with depression. It's quite likely that your psychotherapist will never once ask you, are there aspects of yourself, your soul, that you feel like you've lost, that you need to reclaim? So as a doctor, what I've observed, is there is something so much more than what we can measure. And there is this awareness, this hope, this belief, this intention, what we call consciousness, what we call energy. You know, quantum physics, the entanglement theory, there's all sorts of explanations from a scientific perspective that to me I'm saying like, they're catching up with the ancestors. These are ideas that have arisen in multiple cultures around the planet. The key thing here is that what quantum physics tells us about space-time, that there's no such thing as empty space. It's an energy-rich field. Our bodies are entangled at a fundamental level as a field of correlation. Now that field of correlation right now is being called the quantum field, but I think it's a field of consciousness. We finally have, through the language of science, level A evidence for acupuncture for headaches. That meditation, 48% reduction in heart attack, stroke, and sudden death in people with vascular disease. What we're talking about is restoring health, creating health, using a holistic model, and now we're doing it through the language of science. All of these practices, yoga, meditation, energy healing, suggest to us that our consciousness is driving health effects in ways that are profound, and yet we don't fully understand how. When we bring our energy and our mind together, which are what these mind-body-spirit practices do, we can harness powerful possibilities for healing. Beautiful, Christina. Thank you. Um, and thank you for everyone for hanging in with a little bit of the lag. That trailer will be on our website. The Energy That Heals documentary, and maybe that's a it's a good time to throw into the chat the link um, to the Energy That Heals documentary website. So this is a resource so you can dig in. You know, it's going to be an evolving website as we move forward. We'll be putting more clips. There's link to social channels and things like that. But um, Christina, I, I want to honor that we have just a little time for questions. But before we get into that, um, would you like to share any reflections on what it's been like for you so far as we've been embarking on the filming journey? Sure. I mean, creating a film is like a go, going through, it's a living process and it's like going through a, a healing as you're working on it. And you're, um, especially, you know, this, this topic, um, you know, this film is for me, all it's about this universal life force that has this uh, power to heal and transform and unite us. And it's, it's sacred work. Um, and it's, it, it's an emerging paradigm where science and spirituality um, converge in medicine and healing. And I think that it's what's really needed for, for today. I mean, we, as Dan said, we're in a mental health crisis, a chronic disease epidemic, a, um, a environmental sustainability crisis, and all of those things are connected. Uh, and to me, it's a perspective issue of, um, of, uh, of separation and, and, and materialistic viewpoint. And I think that that's what this film is about, is, is about sharing this story of this, um, this energy that heals from, you know, we need to, we're basically including this energetic perspective. And it's just, it's, it's, it's sacred work for me. It's sacred work for me. So with each interview, um, it, it's just, um, a beautiful healing experience in and of itself. Um, and I'm, I'm just so honored to be making this film with, with you both, with you both actually, and with all of the patients that have been so gracious to share their stories 
and the doctors and scientists and indigenous wisdom holders. I mean, this is, um, you know, it. The, my last film was sort of an undertaking because it started with like the food is medicine and it ended up with your immortal soul. But this film also it's just, it's, um, it's all encompassing and it, it, you know, of course, and we didn't even mention it goes into quantum mechanics because we have to go into the nature of reality. And um, we didn't even talk about, um, you know, last year's Nobel prize winners and on entanglement. I mean, it, it's all going to be in here and I'm, I'm actually thrilled and so excited to be working on this project. So, um, Christina, I mean. thank you so much. And we have a lot of questions. Um, which we will get to. I think we'll be we'll be able to combine and, and answer some of them. Some of them are more procedural, so um, I want to honor that too. Mary is asking, when will we get access to this talk to share with non-Chi members, and will the access expire? Um, as you know, those of you who join as Chi contributors have the wonderful opportunity to view this and other webinars in perpetuity, um, and we give them freely to the public for 48 hours. Um, we do that partly for bandwidth reasons and also to provide a thank you to everyone who is supporting all of the work that is done by our staff um, to put these on. So when you join as a Chi contributor, you do get access to this and all webinar replays. Now, I do know that many of you also want to champion this work and support it and send it to people who may not even know about Chi. So I will talk with the team and see if there is a way that we can have this. Maybe it's streaming, I believe, on YouTube, and maybe there's an opportunity for us to put it onto our YouTube channel as a public webinar um, so that you can freely share this with others. So Mary, thank you for that question. And before we get into questions- I think, I th I think that would be a great idea. Shami. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make this visible. Look, I mean, let me just, you know, hold the reality of holding the CEO position currently <laughs> at Chi. You know, I have to, I have to kind of make all the numbers work and figure out what to do. So <laughs> with that responsibility, I'm, I would love to just sort of make an offer to everyone here, as I mentioned, we are a third of the way through the budget. We have quite a bit more to raise. And as you know, last year, because of your donations, we were able to embark on our biofield tuning sound healing for anxiety study, which is going very well. We do need your support and we need you to help socialize this effort with people who can also support it. If you feel called to support this project so that we can continue and finalize the production, our goal is to release this. I know this sounds like a long time, but our goal is to release this at the beginning of 2025, or it's sometime in 2020. I won't put words in your mouth, Christina. Let's just say sometime in 2025, we need to finish the production. We have several more sites that we need to go do. We need to be able to pay the team members to do the editing, the post-production, the marketing. I won't get into it. We have a whole proposal for anyone who is interested. Um, but if you would like to support and all amounts are meaningful, Jason is going to put a link into our donate page. There are many ways you can support. Um, there are give backs or, you know, gifts of gratitude that we would provide to you, whether you would like to support. We hope you'll come in to support the documentary. When you go to our donate page, we've just updated with our impact report and a short video by me summarizing all the wonderful work that our Chi community has done this year. Because in addition to this project, there has been tremendous strides that our community has made in research, our councils, education. So for all of you who already donate to Chi, thank you so much. And for those of you who feel called to support Chi and support this project, we really extend the gracious invitation for you to consider us in your giving for this year. You simply go to chi.is forward slash donate. So the time of when this film will be released is absolutely funding dependent. And our goal is to get all of the funding support we need for the staff and the team and the production companies to get it all done and released in 2025. So I hope that you will hold that vision with us, that we will complete all of our filming and all of our post-production editing next year and release this out. Um, and, and anyone who wants more details, please feel free to reach out and um, we will we will provide them and invite you to a conversation. I also wanted to just summarize many questions here and interests in integrative cancer care. Not because we planned it, but many of the patients that we are following and interviewing are working with cancer many of them stage four and what also makes this film unique that we didn't have time to touch on is, as you can probably tell it's not a story about one person. It's not a story about one luminary taking you through the journey. It's about many 
facets and voices of wisdom. And cancer is going to be um, a good part of it because one of the things we're doing is we're interweaving the stories of some of the cancer patients that we're following in real time, along with Dan as an integrative oncologist, consultant and friend to these patients, as well as following the scientific story. So it's a very unique film in that you will see that we are going to interweave all of that and, and make it very real in terms of articulating a strong need for integration of these healing practices. That's part of our goal and why we chose at the Consciousness and Healing Initiative to do this because we have to increase public knowledge and understanding to create the demand for these evidence-based practices to be in healthcare and transform suffering. So that is you know, our ultimate goal, or speaking for me, I would say, um, one of my, the biggest goals for me that is very exciting for me about the promise of this film, other than being an incredibly inspiring film in its own right. Um, I'm just checking on other questions here. A lot of things that please focus on cases of patients, yes. Um, you know, <laughs> there are questions about whether we're interviewing um, certain leading lights in this film. So without naming names, I will say that we have reached out to all of them. So far, everyone that we have reached out to has said yes. Um, we have, again, an embarrassment of riches. We don't have time to get into it, but this documentary will also feed into a learning center because we want to make sure people have a good place to go to learn and grow with us, no matter where they are on the healing journey. So we do hope to include all of the leading lights and healing practitioners, as well as scientists in this film and the Learning Center. Um, I really hope that you will continue to stay in, in tune with us. I, I will, um, I wanna speak to this question by Dean. He says, after 10 years of success, my new manager in the publicly funded provincial healthcare system in Canada banned the use of these tools, some of the healing tools we're talking about. How can we support health systems in accepting and expanding the use of energy medicine and psychology tools? It's a really great question. We do think that this film plays a role. The learning center that we will create will have evidence-based summaries. In the US at least, everything happens by public demand. The National Institutes of Health, what is now called the NCCIH, exists because of public demand. It was first the Office of Alternative Medicine, then NCAM, and now NCCIH. So we have to make the public aware of these opportunities. One of the things we're learning even with the fundraising is that we are empowering even our donors, uh, wonderful donors who feel like they don't have space to talk about their healing experiences with others. So this is about all of us really coming out of the closet with the power of healing. And I do think that Dean, the more that we do that, the more we'll see the integration of it. And Christina, Dan, do you wanna comment on, on any of that as well? I mean, I agree with everything you said, Shamini, and this documentary will really make a big difference in the awareness. Uh, my goal, of course, is so many people are aware of this, and I want to get the message to more of my colleagues, uh, to physicians and those in the medical si system to understand the power of all this and that, that they really may need to make a change. Uh, and, and it has to evolve. We keep talking about evolution. And it is it is evolving too slow as as we mentioned, but yeah, it, it's happening, and we need everyone's help. That's why you're you're all here, and everyone mobilizing and sharing the word, and and just saying this is this is important because we're talking about true integration. We're talking about how to make medicine better and how to bring the best that has existed for eons into the medical system, which was there for thousands of years, but it just got really forgotten with all the new medicines and technology. Right, right. And I'll just quickly say, you know, we, when we sat down so many years ago, Shamini, to talk about this, we said that we wanted to do three things with this film. One, to normalize it for people, so that people that are trying biofield modalities, because they are, um, that, and they don't feel comfortable talking about, do feel comfortable and we can normalize this. Uh, two, and that will be done with the patient stories and, and, and showing different modalities in the film. Two is increasing the understanding of the indigenous wisdom and ancient healing systems that incorporate the biofield and spirit and consciousness and healing already. Um, and three, to create awareness of where the scientific evidence is, which we're going to be doing with the studies and the integration of the biofield 
in healthcare so we can get more scientific investment. And those, and that's what this film is doing. And and I don't I don't know if in the top of this we clearly laid that out for people because I want people to understand I mean, this is we've been thinking about this and you know what what does, does what does this have to achieve and um and why are we making it I mean this is um you know and this community actually probably knows it more than anything because they've been living it and so this is um this is this is timely and it's needed and I'm so excited to be part of it. The other, I, I don't, I don't want to say. I want to second everything that Shamini and Christina have been saying from from the beginning. As a board member of Chi, <clears throat> I really need to let everyone know how the, the board and everyone involved in Chi, which is a nonprofit, is totally behind this. I mean, the board members and all the advisors are even contributing themselves for this project, and Shamini and Christina are devoting countless hours, days, weeks, and months at no with no pay to to make this happen. So I can't tell you how grateful I am uh, in the name of all board members to everyone that is contributing. For both of you, what you're doing, Shamini and Christina, for all, all those who are supporting this vision, we're deeply, deeply grateful. And um, I, I'm now in speechless because I'm, my gratitude goes really deep. Thank you. It's an honor to serve in this way. I think we all know that we're all healers and we're all serving in the best ways possible. Um, and with that, you know, I, do, I also want to name that I meant to start this hour with a moment of silence for all of our brothers and sisters across the world that are struggling with war. And may we close all of us in community with just a moment of walking our continued talk with healing energy and let us just take a moment to cohere our fields and send some light over and feel called to serve in all the best ways possible. Let your heart be lifted by the visible and invisible fields of energy and spirit that guide our collective soul's evolution. I'm wishing everyone a wonderful holiday and a return to the bliss of your soul nature, fortified with the energy to continue the healing work in all the ways that you do. Thank you everyone so much for spending some time with us today. Take care and we'll see you probably in 2024. <laughs> Goodbye everyone. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone Thank you. for being here.